Hey folks, it's Josh, and uh, this is a bit of a cold open to this uh, episode of Two Brains, One Bottle. It's the December episode, and I forgot to mention it in the episode you're about to hear, but we're doing a two-hour episode, because it's the holidays, and why not? So, uh, hope you enjoy. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the show that's basically us drinking and talking about life. (laughs) Figuring out life one drink at a time. Thank you! The tagline. It's been a minute since we did one of these. I'm right here, uh, buddy. It's December of 2021. Uh, The last time you heard us, Sean was in Vegas, and now he is in Kansas City-ish. Yeah, by means of uh, somewhere around Kansas City. But yes, I am am back. It is uh, surreal, to say the least. But, you know, uh, you can't... Oh, fuck it. Man, I was going to say something poetic... And it just doesn't work the second time through. It's fine. You know, we're all living life. We're all trying to survive one day to the next. Well, on the plus side, I found out what was going on with me not hearing you all the way. Uh, I needed to plug something in all the way. So Oh, great. So, it's, so it wasn't my issue to begin with. Okay. I'm, I'm the asshole. Uh, if, you're, if you're listening to this, you're a patron. Thank you very much uh, for supporting Room 6. Uh, we do appreciate it. And of course... Without you, there's no one that we're talking to, so we're just screaming into the abyss. But, more importantly, you already know that uh, this is not for the kids. So, if you have a kid around, don't let them listen. We're drinking whiskey. We're talking life. If you have any questions for us, you can hit us up at twobrainsonebottle at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Hey, Sean. Yeah. I only seem to get sick on weekdays. I must have a weekend immune system. That's cute. That's cute. That's a that's a joke you could tell your grandmother if she wasn't killed by the pandemic. Ouch. Yeah. Wow. Way to just take it there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay then. I mean it's it's a polite joke. That's what I mean. Right on. Well, some of the things that we're uh, we're going to get into here is uh, I've got some we've got uh, some t- tips and tricks for, you know, n- no one tells you about moving in with someone. Uh, I've got some seasonal type interesting factoids got some weird things some weird news and uh who knows what else because we're drinking what are you drinking right now sir oh man i'm drinking a stumpy's old monroe distiller select bloody butcher bourbon whiskey bottled at 56 alcohol that's 112 proof that is barrel strength and it is 100 percent uh what kind of uh blood corn or bloody corn I'm sorry, what? Yeah, it's a species of corn. Give me just a second. Big, uh, locally grown, bloody butcher red corn. That sounds hideous. So it is a red corn kernel that is then Mm -hmm. pressed and extracted, and that's the grain. It's a single grain, 100% of this grain. So it is a single grain whiskey coming uh, coming out of Missouri that was started by... A bunch of guys watching a Cardinals game in St. Louis. And they said, people have been making booze for thousands of years. We could do it. And so they looked (laughs) up how to do it on the internet. They found all the parts they needed at Walmart. And they started with fermenting honey and making meat. And it was the grossest thing that any of them has ever tasted before. But they used that as motivation to get better and to do better and to use higher quality ingredients and to improve their methods and bring experts in. And they just grew a distillery. Yeah, I guess that's the American dream. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I was uh, I wanted to make sure that I had something to talk about and bring to this side of the conversation. But I got to watch a little video interview that the uh, owner, Mr. Stumpf, that would be (laughs) S-T-U-M-P-F. With a silent F, or sorry, silent P, I guess. And that's okay. Well, it's not often I see that in my last name line of work, P F L U M. Like it's a, right. a silent P doesn't always occur, man. It is weird. It's nice seeing it. It's just it was like, oh, okay, I could see a little bit of me in this whiskey. So, I mean, it's bottled strong as fuck, just like me. <laughs> Okay. And uh, let me see here. I was looking for... So this is the first batch of yeast that they used because this is a store special sold for a uh, fresh time market. Time. Noise. Time. T-H-Y-M-E. 
So yeah, it's aged for cool. forty point three months, and the barrel proofs one twenty five, and a char le- barrel char level of M one W, which I don't know what that means because I didn't have enough time to look it up. But M one W. But it even lists the the char specification. Huh. There's that's a ton of information onto a very simple, very rustic looking homemade label. Okay. But there's lots of uh, lots of nice little intricacies in the design of the label. Like everything has a bit of care into it. The cork synthetic. And the M1W, it's what does it say? Barrel char. Just, barrel char level. Barrel char. I'm trying to look it up for you. And so far, I've got Minnesota tax <laughs> law. No, 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 no. Um. No. Oh, weird. Man. But on the nose, that is just fresh cherries. Right. And that's uh, local to you, right? Yeah, local. Shame. Sounds sounds wonderful. Honeysuckle, vanilla. I don't... Yeah, I can't find... I don't know. It must... Maybe it's their own internal grading, because I found everything but, like, whiskey char related. Uh, I will look it up. You know what? Please make a note of that, because I don't have a fucking pen and paper in front of me, because I'm an idiot. I did not come okay. prepared, and uh, I will look that up between the break, and I will answer the continuity in the next episode. Hey, behind the scenes. Yeah, I will make it happen for the next one. Pay, pay no attention to the weirdo in the purple robe or whatever. But also, I will get the job done. I just got to find time to do it. Nice. Right on. Well, I'm drinking a lovely, just banal, nothing too fancy, uh, Duncan Taylor 12-year-old blend scotch, blended scotch, rather. Um <laughs> It's it's nothing you know it's nice nothing to sneeze at it's easy I got I I have a lovely uh, whiskey ice ball that somebody was nice and bought me the molds for I think that was my wife <clears throat> and yeah it's just there's not much to say about it it's you know it's got hints of sherry and um, Hints of, uh, you know, a little bit of smoky to it, but not so much that I hate it. Um, it's it's just wonderfully balanced. And I, I hate to be boring with that description, but that's it. It's just a nice Tuesday night, you know, whiskey. So, I res- now that we got the... I respect a, a nice, easygoing Tuesday night whiskey. This is anything <laughs> but that. So I... Am- After some of the ones we've had, yeah. <laughs> this This hits like a fucking trains my god man like the 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 ethanol is there but it's it's voluptuous it is it explodes (laughs) like like candy like uh it's like feeling pop rocks and soda inside your stomach Mm. holy crap but are you sure that's not gout (laughs) oh no it's wonderful because it just it bursts out with more flavor every Exhale is a new level of floral notes or perfume notes or syrupy notes or fruity notes. Wow. It's really expressive, and I just want to let let it sit there and lose a bit of the dragon's breath, but I'm excited to go deeper into it over this the course of this episode. So it's one of those ones that challenges you from Oof. the get-go, but then hopefully it's... If, you're, it, if it, you it, can stand up to it, because it is, it is one of the sweeter kind of sherry bomb feelings that, mm-hmm. that unctuousness, that, that savoriness that pairs so well with fruit that comes through. Oh, that's one of my favorite notes. One of my favorite mouthfeels. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy this. This is going to be good. This was a well picked for the, for the price point at only $40 and well picked because it is, really complex on the higher end of the notes and it shines and it shimmers and it's a little glassy there where the alcohol is too high, but it's, it's right up there in those high notes that I like to live in when I drink my scotches, my highlands and my, my sherry, my sherry finishes. Okay. Like it's got, would you say, mm, I'm sorry. It is not, it it is not a, it is not a, uh, caramel, vanilla, brown sugar, bourbon it is anything but i did not expect right. that going into it and it's so sweet 
but it's not it's not like uh, bread pudding that we talk about right Christmas on. bread pudding. It's not yeah. not that. It's more in the aperitif realms of of. So the, the sweet is there. The sweet's there to kind of round off the edges. Yeah, because the fruit notes are big. It's, okay. Well, now that we've driven away everybody that doesn't care about whiskey. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> sorry, that's just damn good stuff. No, no, no. It's two brains, one bottle. Do. The bottle's in the fucking name. If you don't I like know. whiskey and you're not here for the description, <clears throat> goodbye. Right. Goodbye. 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 I don't need you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess it's two brains, two bottles now. Yeah. But, a special. But I, I, I mean, you know what? <clears throat> it is one bottle across two episodes. I'll allow it. As co-creator, I'll allow, I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. All right, CC. Um, Referee Mills so, Lane. Yeah, thank you. I said CC, but I meant Mills Lane. Yep. All right. Uh, celebrity <clears throat> well, Deathmatch. One of the greatest shows uh, ever to be on TV. I just wanted to watch Nick lose it just once. Nick just Nick, really Nick just Diamond. go off. You mean Yeah, I just wanted to watch Nick, Nick Diamond, Diamond did go, go off. off. Didn't he have a match? Did he? Yeah, Johnny Johnny was the other one. Johnny was the tall one that was always composed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Nick, All right, Nick moving, had moving on. Mustache. <laughs> moving on. Uh, ten things nobody tells you about moving in with someone. I thought this was appropriate considering that you went to Kansas City to move in with someone, mm-hmm. and that someone will uh, will get to. You know, and and before that, I had someone move in with me. Yes, but we, yes, and so yes, it's, so so it's both edges of the coin, both sides yeah, so of well, the life now live. <clears throat> But this is stuff I found online that I'm excited. I really res- I really resonated with a lot of this. Having, uh, I've lived with my wife for t- over 21 years now, and before that, I've lived with a couple different women, and it it's true. So number ten, people shed hair a lot. Yeah. Oh, I gr- <clears throat> like, I grew up with an older sister and a mom. I knew about hair shedding. That was not but, not yeah. a surprise. It was more than welcome to if, it. Uh, if you don't, if, if you weren't aware of this and you move in with someone and your partner, suddenly you're finding hair all over the place, say, I don't know, on the shower wall, because they just pull it out of the drain and stick the it on the wall there. wall. Like animals. <laughs> yeah. Like we have these I, little silicone up. devices now that catch all the hair and we just pull it off that. So do we. It the, and it's but like. You, but, you know. Oh man! No, many many the time. Oh, I would substitute one for that, and I would say things no one tells you about moving in with someone. The house is yours together, so when something breaks, it's got to yeah. it breaks. We just had the the drain stopper go. Oh, nice! So now it doesn't stop unless we use one of those damn little silicone things. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just part of living in a house. It's like, oh yeah, shit happens. Yeah. Um, actually, none of these on the list talked about like home maintenance. So, oh. good job bringing that up. It, it's true. It is. Uh, but like, just to back to the the shedding hair thing. Oh. It is unfathomable if you you clean out your vacuum one time, and you're just not like all you know the hairs wrapped around, and you're like. Okay, I have short hair. What the hell? <laughs> and it's amazing. All right, uh, number nine. Oh, actually, back. To, yeah, so people shed hair a lot. If you have a problem with that, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> you need to resign yourself to that fact of hair is going to just appear magically. Also, in line to your vacuum comment, when you get a vacuum, when you buy a vacuum, look at the bottom, look at where the hole Mm-hmm. Where the receiver is for the air, and if it's off yep. to the side, to the left or the right, oh no, fuck that! It's going to be garbage. Get the one with the yep. hole in the middle, and make sure oh, it God. feeds in through like a funnel, because that way it mm-hmm. directs all of the airflow. That shit, people don't ever tell you. I'm sorry to bore nope. out your podcast with like, no, That's here's fine. real life shit too. <laughs> um. Well, okay. So yeah, real real life. You can tell I'm recently domesticated. <laughs> <laughs> He's been tamed. Right. <laughs> the the wild flammer. Me, the shrew, <laughs> the taming of the shrew. Exactly. All right, uh, number nine. Actually sleeping with someone takes some getting used to, and then sleeping alone takes getting used to. It's way different when you actually have to fall asleep next to each other. And that's like, there's a reason why a lot of couples, my mine included, 
we have like one of us goes to sleep before the other one because otherwise the other one has a hard time going to sleep. Mm. You know, and yet at the same time, if I fall asleep on the couch and she wakes up in the middle of the night and I'm not there, she has, she can't go back to sleep. That's more of a comfort thing, but it's like sleeping with someone and sleeping mm -hmm. with someone, two totally different things. Mm -hmm. And when you, especially if you're like, uh, you're on a trip, say to Disney World, and you are like, we, we're getting up at, you know, seven in the morning mm -hmm. and you, you don't go to bed normally until one in the morning. Mm -hmm. You either have to suck it up or you have to force yourself to go to sleep early. Mm -hmm. And then both of you are just like, good night. And, and just, yeah. Because you get you, you get into that pattern and, and a good relationship, the, the, you develop little patterns. And when something interrupts that pattern, it can sometimes be a problem mm -hmm. if it if it becomes the new pattern. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what what's your sleeping patterns like? Uh, so I've got two things to talk about. One, mm -hmm. we just had the appointment at the Mayo Clinic. Oh, right. Where and by, because this is post uh, brain tumor surgery removal, which went off without a hitch and a 95% extraction amount. So the, awesome. the only little bit that's left is around the artery. Um, and that'll be fine. It's manageable. But when we were up at Mayo Clinic and we were in the same room, I know that she's a big sleeper and, uh, you know, sleeps frequently, likes the naps, uh, likes the sleeping, uh, and deep sleeper, deep, deep sleeper, uh, uh, very vocal, both in the talking, both in the talking during the sleep and the snoring while asleep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I sleep pretty silent, pretty like the dead, which is how I like the volume to be like a graveyard because I, yeah. Yeah. And cold. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even talk about snoring. Now, <laughs> now we're in the same room and the snoring is particularly bad because there's packing up there and we're getting it removed. And the volume was such that I had to sit up all night and I watched uh, uh, some Marvel's What If. In, you know instead what? Instead of sleeping. I heard good things. My wife watched one episode and I, I watched most of it with her. And I was like, I can see why everybody's like losing their shit about this. This is amazing. It was wonderfully um, done, masterfully crafted. Yeah, and like if especially if you know the Watcher What If comics mm -hmm. and you grew up reading a lot of them like I did. Um I, I used to love those because I was like, oh, this is a refreshing break from all the Fantastic Four time travel right. crap and, and the X-Men multi-universe. And I was like, yeah, what if? What if? And and it was it was nice. So yeah, it was really well done. But anyway, and now Marvel Marvel Zombies is getting its own spinoff. I'm excited about that. Mm. Just dropping that. I, now I hope that they're just faithful to the comic art, uh, artwork same. and not going to make it same. like like don't make it live action, please. That's we got live action out there, you know, for for zombies. Oh, but now you said it. Now I want it. I want the live action. I was like, I would be okay with the cartoon, the what if cartoon style. Only only but, if they brought like then, Chris Evans as Captain America zombie. But then you and, said, you know. <laughs> but then you said no live action. I went. Oh, that's that's interesting though. I would go that way. <laughs> but um but going what if <laughs> but watching what if. So we it's a six hour drive for us to get to Mayo uh -huh. one way. So I drive up for six hours. We get there, we unpack, we do the walk to make sure that we have the timing right to be there, to get there early. You know, little minimal harassment from security. Everything's just run as a very tight ship. And uh, we go out, we have some dinner, I have some drinks, I come back. She's already asleep. She's she's nice. on the bed, she's on the way out, watching baseball. I sit down to watch with her, and just out. So turn the game off, Go try to go to sleep, and she's just out so fucking quick. I don't know how, like a Mormon, her head hits the pillow and she's just <laughs> dead. Like a, like a soldier on the battlefield. Man, I was saying this earlier today. Men need transition time. We need time to like shift from work into home mode and home into sleep mode and sleep into like deep sleep mode. <laughs> I enjoy those little 
those little wind down periods, you know? I can't well, I can't just fucking I'm, shift. I'm, I'm not a Lamborghini. I'm built like a pickup <laughs> truck, my friend. You gotta shift <laughs> accordingly. <laughs> I'm going to stop you with the, the men generalization only because I'm different. Um, I, I, I like my wind down time, but when it's bedtime, I'm down, I'm generally down within 10 minutes and it drives her nuts if she's awake at the time because I do, I do snore occasionally and she snores too. I just somehow better at sleeping through it. Right. Like I can, I, I can just be like, now is sleep time and I sleep and, right. and part of that is mental like part of that is i force myself to just be like it's like when you leave work at home and you go home or you leave home at work when you go to work i leave life outside of like okay it's bedtime now it's not smexy time it's not nothing time it's sleep time i wish i could do that i can't i still have not learned how to well it doesn't always work mentalize the sleep like right. that that is a like that is a she, highly knows, organized brain that i do not possess right now but i'm working it, it on does it. happen occasionally it does happen occasionally <sighs> Like say November of 2016, where I there was so much run, crap running through my head that I eventually was like, might as well get up and go watch something and try to drift off. Right, right, and we'll move on from that. Right. Um. All right, uh, the so, other thing was so uh -huh. so because it took six hours to get up there, I didn't sleep that whole night. We went through the <laughs> procedure in which I watched. All of them sending a tube up her nose to remove packing with a suction cup or a suction vessel. That was a lot to process, man. And then we get done with the procedure and they're like, all right, cool. You're good to go. And I'm like, home? She goes, yeah. And so six hours back, all of this on no sleep. That is a young man's game. As someone who has been yeah. doing this, like, it's not, I did this 10 years ago for 10 years. This is, I have just been, I have been doing this for di over 10 years now of, oh yeah, we'll just go. We'll just go and we'll drive across country and we'll go over here. We're like, we'll just fucking go. Right. It took me two or three days to like really get my shit back together over that like two nights of not sleeping the night before because I was stressed out that we wouldn't leave on time. Like my night anxiety is so fucking bad that it makes falling asleep even more difficult. So I'm, there's no way we're falling asleep at the same time. That just is a foreign concept to me. So like there, right. there is a whole other plethora of issues <laughs> That go now, see, on that don't involve your partner, where it's just like I'm just fucked with sleep. Well, uh, one of the things that I have that you don't have that kind of forces me to just make myself go to sleep is a day job. Yeah, is a is is a getting up like now. You know, my 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 daughter, she's 13. She gets picked up uh, by a carpool in the morning, and then you know my father in law picks them up in the afternoon. With rare exception, I see her in the morning, maybe, and I say, "Have a great day at school." And that's it. I see my wife in the morning. I say, have a great day at work because she works from home now because COVID. Right. And COVID, COVID made her, her you know, work say, oh, hey, guess what? You don't, you can work from home six days or, or four days out of the week and come one day of the week. Mm -hmm. And she hates it. Right. She hates it. But um, I, yeah, that, that day job kind of, you reach, eventually you stay up till two or three in the morning and wake up at seven enough times and your body says, right. hey, stupid. <laughs> right but that's you're, you're the, going you're going that's the other thing so i just had out of like from moving in april to getting here just last month i had my first gig back and that was i saw you post about very it very welcoming that was really nice to be able to sit and play just some old school funk drums with backing tracks right. going you talk about a safety net it was a, yeah, you did. It was a it was basically a uh, a karaoke session, and we were the live <laughs> nice. band with tracks. It was like my job was to sit there and make the track feel good, and that's it. Nice. I got to sit with a sax player I have played with before and really enjoyed his company. He's a fucking funny guy. We just hung back and smiled and talked shit. And how you doing? Yeah, you still doing that gig? You still playing over there? That's nice. You still, you still making, yeah, yeah. You know, like just playing, going through the motions. And, oh, key change coming up. Right, uh, bridge. All right, yeah. So I was saying, like, right back into just it was a conversation, 
And it was so nice to fall into a musical conversation again. Right on. It was just, it was a killer time. Uh, so that was my first paying gig back. And then this coming mm-hmm. week, I start up with my, <clears throat> my first uh, private lesson. It's going to be piano. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for you. So really moving in the right direction. Yes. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. That, all of that. Yep. And the, all that win. Oh, good job. The, you know, the student's mom wants to eventually learn guitar. Her son wants to take a nice. piano. Like I could start doing family discount. I'm, I've already got it built into the lesson plan. I've oh, got it. I've got to, I've got to work over the website, but pretty soon that'll be ready to announce. And so, yeah, making, making changes. Cool. Got some soundproofing to get for the rehearsal studio, and then that'll be up, and then I can work eight hours a day somewhere. It's yeah, it's just it's you know, I, it's I long I long for a YouTube office to be like, okay, I'm going to record and leave. That's what I go somewhere soundproof. That's proof, what I'm getting. Light. That's what I'm getting. I want. Oh God, I want. I'm, that I'm working but on anyway. it, but that's hey, that's what the Patreon's yeah. for. People in the house keep asking me, "What do you want for?" Yes, exactly. Yeah, people want to want to keep asking me, "What do what do you uh you know what do you want for Christmas?" I'm like, more subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers for me right now. It's, office space. It's more. It's it's. I've got the. I finally got the space. Twenty two by eleven. Oh, mm. fifteen foot ceilings, semi vaulted on an angle. Damn boy. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, oh. we're we're burning. We're we're moving on here. We're only two into this. You know list. what? So we're we're talking. This is the conversation part of it. It is. It is. And um, I, again, we just want to thank you know the listeners. Thank you so very much, not only for supporting the channel, but just for giving us someone to talk to because. Uh, we can talk to each other on the phone, but as you can this, tell, this is us talking to each other. Yeah, it, and it's been missed because um, this is the first time that we've seen each other. Actually, we're on a, a video uh, aside from this mm-hmm. since since uh, eight months. I think no, not eight months. How long have you been there? April. Yeah, April. Okay, June, July. So about six months. Seven, seven months. Seven. Hey. That's right. I rounded this is the, down. This is um, the December eight months. Yes. So and uh, it just occurred to nothing. Nothing coming in the ninth month. Right. Uh, what, what? What? I said. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, to nothing, no babies. To nothing coming in the ninth <laughs> month. Mm. So, speaking of eight and nine, moving on to number eight. Eight. Number eight. Tip and trick for things nobody tells you about moving in with someone. Your partner may have weird eating habits you don't know about yet, and vice versa. Like, I don't like, I eat my cereal dry if I have cereal. I don't add milk or anything, and it weirds my wife out to no end. I wish our problems were that easy. Uh, We eat at such drastically different times that it feels like the kitchen's always dirty. Like, we just, (laughs) like, the kitchen's never clean. And it feels never clean. And I'm like, I put in, I swear to God, 24 hours straight cleaning this fucking house. I know I cleaned that kitchen three times and I didn't even use it. I know that's happening. It's just getting messy. You... But she wasn't home. It's getting messy by <laughs> itself, man. It's the cat. It's the cat. It's the two cat. of them. That's how they're getting us. They're playing like they oh. hate each other upstairs. But really, they're working together to rearrange the plates. So it's always fucking dirty in the kitchen. I'm like, I don't cook See, this many meals. I mean, you do real, you do remember, I film my interviews in my kitchen. Right. So at, at, at the very least, a good half of the kitchen needs to be clean because it's on camera. Right. And those are always the days where it's like, hey, let's fry something. Right. Hey, let's make taco night. Right. Or, you know, hey, let's make things with lots of... And, and that's fine. It's fine. I've, I've got it down now to a science. It is manageable but if you learn... This is the skill set I but, wish but, they told you about living with someone. Like, if you mm-hmm. are going to just, like, you're going to rent a place. You're going to have mm-hmm. your own space. When you cook, they got to teach you how to put your shit away as you're cooking. Cause if clean you, as you go. Because if you don't know how to clean as you go, you wind up with all the, all the things mm-hmm. that you touched in the whole kitchen, which is every fucking drawer, every pan, every spoon mm-hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. Which you have six times as many spoons as you have forks, or vice versa. Yeah. Oh, dude, just between you, me, and the patrons, one thing that really annoys the crap out of me, I don't mean to turn this into a bitch fest, but when people use the have to wash by hand steak knives 
to cut like a piece of fruit or some butter. And I'm like, thank you for making me another dish I have to hand wash. Knife, thank you. Knife skills. You should always. I, I, you should always like have. like four of them laying around. No, you should always have one chef's knife and one mm-hmm. utility knife, like a five inch, maybe a Santoku or just a little, like a small, like a larger paring knife. Some right. kind of utility and some kind of chef's knife and that's it. Fucking maybe a bread knife, a serrated edge. But that's all you need to do all the jobs. Don't yeah. use the steak knives. To Why would you cut? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Why and you know how many it's knives we have in this house. It's it's a lot of knives. Why would you do that? Like there, That's sometimes silly. I'll. It, it's being silly. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm but trying to that, just. It's being silly. But, but back to the weird eating habits. Uh, so now so is, yeah, is the time is, is worse than anything else because we pretty much eat the same thing. We eat what we want when we want, and it's not like anything's too fucking extravagant. But. But, well, there's still a vegan thing, right? Oh, really? Yeah. You're in Kansas City now. You're yeah. you're, in, you're in barbecue land. Well, I get it. that's the thing. Now there are supply chain issues, so I'm finding myself going more veggie anyway. <laughs> so it is kind of this right. weird like little dance of what's in stock that's local, you know, trying to stay local you, and you, you just clean as possible. You know, it's funny. I was I was out with uh, Ari, my, my for the listeners, my 13-year-old daughter, and we... Back in the day, you know, she was in Girl Scouts when she was younger. We would have daddy-daughter date nights. That would be the night, like, before the meeting. Mm-hmm. We would go, and we would get ourselves a, something out. And sometimes it'd be junk food, fast food, whatever. And sometimes it'd be, like, sweet tomatoes. Or it'd be, you know, a buffet. It'd be, like, something pretty well-balanced. And we were we were uh, driving home from California when we just went to uh, help my mom celebrate her 87th birthday. Mm-hmm. And, and we got into town, and we're like, well, you know, we're going to go out and have some dinner just the two of us because it's that we're still on a road trip and that's what you do and and we didn't eat in baker we didn't eat in prim we we, we were like no no we're gonna wait till we get into our, our hood our, our neighborhood and, and go have some real food and she's like i don't want fast food we just had cracker barrel oh god <laughs> see cracker and we had one of those things and, and, i don't know and, if and I'm, on the way there i don't know if i'm on the way there we st- uh, uh honestly it was Pretty damn good. It feels like it's going to challenge you. Like it's going to. But before it's going to hurt on the way you. To, but on the way to Cracker Barrel, we hit Baker because my mom lives three hours south of here. We hit Baker and we had Burger King for breakfast. So already our colons are like, dude. And for dinner, we're like, both of us are like, I don't want fast food. I don't want anything like, please, nothing heavy. And uh, and and we both were like, I really wish sweet tomatoes was still a thing. Because I want like a goddamn salad, and I want some soup, and I want maybe some, you know, uh, uh, some focaccia, you or want, you know. But like, you want a, fiber, you want liquid, you want yes, you want something I, to get everything to grab onto. And, but because that was shut down, thanks COVID, we ended up going to Panda Express. Or not, sorry, what? We, ended up, we ended up going. Hold, I'm back. Hold, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, I I misspoke. We went. We ended up going to PF Chang's. Wait, I think that's worse. And all, better. No, all we had, better? all we had was, all we had was, chicken lettuce wraps, uh, and some pan fried um, pork dumplings, or you know, basically gyoza. We had pork, pan fried pork, pork, pork dumplings, and we split those two things, and we had water. And when we were done, we're like, that was perfect. That was perfect. Okay. And then, and then about say eleven o'clock, we both ate our leftover food. <laughs> from Cracker Barrel. <laughs> oh. But then but then our body was like, "Hey, hey, hey, hey. You, you know, hey, you know it's time, it's snack time." Hey. Oh hey. man. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm down, I'm back down to like I need to I I had to start cooking today at 3 to make sure I would be done and like kitchen cleaned and ready to go by 5 so I'd have some time to eat and then shower and get ready for the show. But I'm starting to cook at three. Things are starting to come out at four fifteen instead of three forty-five because I had something bone in that should have been bone out, and I didn't pay attention to it. And so it, it, giggity, giggity. Things, things started going haywire. And I'm like, all right, look, you're gonna lose some time. This is why you started at three. Like I had to be so fucking meticulous with it mm-hmm. because it, it was, and it was like it, back to working in a kitchen. It was like I have to be more diligent about when my start and stop times are for cooking. But then I go, well, then why don't I apply that to sleep? Right. 
Like the, the, right. the uh, diligence is there, but like sometimes I go, ah, fuck it. I'm right. gonna. I don't care if I start cooking at 11 p.m. This grilled cheese sandwich is gonna take till two. Right. On. And and you know what? Fight it all you might. It's the best goddamn grilled cheese you'll ever eat in your life. Ah, I know. It's a it's a it's a hard it's a hard juxtaposition, being both man and God. Wow. <laughs> Okay then, moving on. <laughs> Number seven top of the top ten things yeah, that I told you about yeah, moving in with someone. Habits. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. She snacks on tortilla chips, and I eat fucking salted nuts by the handful. I don't know. Yeah. Eating habits. Yeah, that's. And honestly, you're just gonna have to. Li- you're just you gonna have to. Deal. Li- you're just yeah, gonna have you gotta to live with the person. Yeah, there's more just important deal with shit you gotta deal with. Like how it, it's. You're going to end up having, like, this is where I keep my certain things that you don't like, and this is where you keep your certain things that I don't yeah. like, and never the twain shall meet. Right. And when we, have, when we have dinner together, if we have dinner together, or lunch together, or whatever, then we, we come we common ground. Right. Fine. Why, why, is this, yeah. why is this such a hard concept to deal with? We don't have to share everything. There can why, just is be like, why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? This Now, this next one ties in with number 10, the people shed hair a lot. Different people bathe differently, like really differently. Some people will, when they're done, just drop that towel anywhere or they'll hang it on a door to dry or whatever. And some people will fold it, put it back on the rack. Some people will use a bar of soap. Some people will use shower gel. Some people will use shampoo in place of soap. And some people just won't use soap. And and some people will take baths. Some people take showers. It's really going to, you're going to have to figure out like, how to live with each other's bathing habits because even that is just weird sometimes. I want you to think about this. Some people do all of those things. <laughs> oh, boy. I'll, I'll be honest. Full disclosure. Oh, boy. I'm a, Some people I, check I'm a, off I'm a, all those I'm a shower. Boxes. I'm a, I'm a sh- I'm, I'll use shampoo for the hair and depending on how the day was, I might use shower gel for the body or I'll just use shampoo for the body. I don't grab that bar of soap. Not generally. If I'm... I got I got two modes of showering, in and out in five to seven minutes, or luxury, or I'm putting the stuff on my face and I'm scrubbing the crap out of it and I'm making mm-hmm. like I'm taking the time, you know. I can't remember last time I took a bath. Oh no, baths are weird. Like people I'm sitting in dirty baths, water. Yeah, people who take baths like to sit in their own filth. Well, like like John Green. He he calls taking a shower being pelted by water bullets. I'll take I that. I get it. I'll take that. But yeah, it's a lot of opportunities are, to act like Keanu the only Reeves time in the I've been, The only time I enjoy water, or, or wow, let back that up. The only time I enjoy a bath is like I'm super sore and I'm soaking in Epsom salt, or you know, like it's medicinal. Like I I need to do that because our tub ain't big enough for two. It ain't a, it ain't a sexy time kind of bath. That's for sure. I'll tell you what. Let me let me ask you this question. Would you rather Tell have you what? would you rather have a custom bath, right? Mm-hmm. So some kind of silicone padding alternative to porcelain, like something hard. Just everything's made of something jelly mm-hmm. and massaging. Oh. Now hold on. Ooh. Okay. Got the water jets, right? You got an ad you got an additional thing that comes over and hits you like a shower. You got two or three of them. Fuck it, they pop out of the sides. Okay, you got an all I've over. Seen that. You got an all over <laughs> body experience with your tub, or you get a jacuzzi that seats four or six people that does like three quarters of those functions. So, are you a good neighbor? And you're like the barbecue house, <laughs> or are you the? It, it, we're gonna have like. But you, but the bath only fe- sits one. It only sits one. So you got to have your bath, your luxurious bath, alone, one at a time. You you say that like it's a bad thing. I'm I'm just saying. Some people are like, nah, man, you got to make that a couple's thing. But no, this is what makes no. it harder. By yourself. See, for me, yeah, for me, uh, 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 the shower happens because it's a means to an end. Mm-hmm. It's the means to an end is I don't stink, so I get more loving, or or uh, so I I'm feeling really really dirty and i want to feel like less of a pig mm-hmm. or i can't stand my own stink mm-hmm. or 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 something like say i'm feeling dehydrated and certain body parts are starting to sting and i need to clean them 
if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how a shower will suddenly, it's not rehydrating you really, but it makes you feel less miserable. Well, it gets so. the, it gets the blood thinned out and circulated and moving through your body. That's part of the heat. Yeah. The cold shower people freak me the fuck out. They can take all that straight to I, hell. I, um, if they like cold showers a... so much, they should go to hell. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, there, there was there was a period of time when I was I was trying to lift for size, lift weights for size, and and that didn't last long. But I was trying to, and and part of that is you're going to be sore, and to minimize soreness, if you take a cold shower and then like as cold as you can handle and as hot as you can handle for. 30 seconds on and off about six times each, you're not sore the next morning. It really helps the soreness. <coughs> that being said, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and and uh, quite frankly, I'm with you. Cold showers suck. Cold showers are sadness and failure. And you're just standing there, you know, in, in, a, in a terrible 80s, you know, love ballad. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it without thinking that I'm going to have... Uh... Sarah McLaughlin sing a song in front of me, mm. you know, for five cents a day. In the arms there it is. I didn't want to copyright strike, you know. Oh, wait, it's oh, Patreon. No, no. I guess you can do whatever you want through Patreon. I guess. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a YouTube video that only patrons can see, but oh. I'm not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, 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 I doubt that. Okay. Now, if, we, if, we, if I plugged in a, the actual, you know, recording. Dropped it. Right. Then we get into dicey territory. I cannot tell you. Uh, patrons, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. Part of what I do is I review people's music. I also interview them. And a lot of times they'll say, instead of us performing, because say we're a heavy metal band and we don't want to you know, play acoustic, we, you know, here, plug in a music video at the end of the interview. They will literally send me the files. Like I have documented proof. Hey, use this. And, and I still have to argue with, you know, depending on their record label and how they set things up with YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, or with distribution, I immediately get a copyright claim, regardless of me saying in the description, like, you know, all music or or video, you know, used with permission of the, you know, whatever. Um, and then I have to argue it. And most times I, I argue it and I say, blah, blah, blah. They sent it to me. It's for this. Um, but I've, I've literally gotten a copyright claim. I had to fight because I grabbed a little clip off of YouTube of Bill Medley singing, um, oh, I forget the name of the woman he sang it with, but it's the song from Dirt Dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh, my body. And I, I used, uh, I had the time of my life. And oh. I used literally, literally less than 10 seconds of it because I counted that shit. And they, boom, it automatically popped. So I said, this is literally less than 10 seconds. It's under fair use. The video has nothing to do with anything. It's just used for comedic effect. There was a bass player for a band I reviewed a live show of. And he's... You want to talk, like, you, you ever see a band where at least one member of the band is like, they're having the time of their life. Mm-hmm. They are high, or they're just like, yeah! And this bass player was just thumping, and it was a, it was a metal band, and they were just, he was just, he looked like he was playing, like, you know, at a, at a, at a, a Cuban restaurant playing salsa or something. He was having such a good time. Like, he needed puffy sleeves. He was just having a blast. But he was just, and, and, and his, and I was just like, he's having the time of his life, and I, I put that clip of that that song in there, and it was hilarious. It's I think it's hilarious anyway. Uh, I make these videos for me mostly anyway. But uh, but anyway, we digress. Yeah. Speaking of though, recording. Um, no, actually, that's 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 the next one. Number six. At least one of you better know how to do some basic cooking. Now you and I, we've got that figured out. You do the cooking, right? Most of it. Yep. And and me, I can cook. They just all don't want to do the dishes and clean, so I say, "Fine, I'm not going to cook," <laughs> and and I'll I'll take out the trash and I'll do the dishes. And you and I come home, and many times there's lovely dinner waiting for me. See, I'm kind of a tyrant in the kitchen. I I <laughs> but I have like I have so much information on you know oh just one more step and you can make this even better by doing this. Oh, just one more thing and you can take this from this to this to this. Like I uh, I get into. Your chef splinter is what you're saying. Yeah, we absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I go, why don't you just do this? And then I look at the time and I go, oh, because it added a whole extra hour onto it. <laughs> but I don't, and now it's night. But yeah. you know that I think that stems from I don't like having things prepared for me. It makes me feel weird. I'm not accustomed to it. It's kind of like well, you must you must hate eating out then. 
uh, it's not my favorite. It's, it's a lot of the reason I learned how to cook. Didn't want to inconvenience yeah. someone else with having to cook my food, so I learned to cook it myself. Right on. That's no, I, I I respect that. I do. And it's the same to me. That's the same line of logic as if I eat out, I throw away my damn trash. I take, I put my tray away. I don't leave you know a mess on the table. I don't care if if it's McDonald's or whatever. I I've done the job. I'm a grown up. I can throw this stuff away myself. I always feel weird if I'm at a place where you look around. Wait, where's all the where's the trash can? Where's the, Right. Oh, oh, they clean up. They clean up for me. All right. Right. Like, say, uh, Jason's Deli is like that. You just leave the ta- the tray, and it's weird. It just like you really want to take it up there and be like, "Hi, can can I give this to you?" I wipe down the table, <laughs> and it's not a guilt thing so much as it is I'm trying to. It's kind of like wearing a, a a mask right now in the pandemic. Yeah. It's not that I I feel guilty and I want to wear it. I'm trying to help you out. You know. Well, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> That's a whole other no, thing. you're right. I agree with you. <clears throat> but, yeah. I mean, if you don't know how to cook and you're moving in with someone um, and they don't know how to cook, well, get good, scrub. Well, can you <laughs> just look at it from a survival standpoint and start with, mm-hmm. what's your favorite <clears throat> thing to eat? Learn how to make that. Yep. Learn. I, I learn, would say your parents failed you. Learn how to be able to do that meal as a breakfast variation as a lunch mm-hmm. variation and as like a very nice dinner, like take the time to learn how to, if you like, you know, doing like roasted chicken, learn how to do an entire roast chicken top to bottom, take the process and like salt brine it, but also be able to get a rotisserie chicken from the fucking deli, tear it apart and leave no meat. Oh, those on, things like leave no meat on the carcass and actually use right. everything. Then take the carcass and make stock out of it. Like, do the additional two or three steps that set you up for success down the road. It, yeah, those those pre cooked carcasses are amazing. Like it those doesn't pre-cooked chickens. it doesn't take you any extra any extra shit other than like some water mm-hmm. and vegetables you already oh. have in the fridge. That admit it, we yeah. all have vegetables in the fridge that are on the verge of going bad. Chop the fucking mm-hmm. veggies up and throw them in with the carcass. Or or you know what? One word or two words. Crock pot. Those yeah. those veggies. If nothing else, you just chop up all those veggies that are pretty much almost bad, and then you throw a hunk oh. of meat in the crock pot, oh. throw some liquid, and you've got. You come home and you're like, "Oh, this is the best stew." I want to teach. I want to teach people how to do three different breadings, do a beer batter, be able to do a panko breading, and be able to do a bread crumb breading, or like a cornbread. Well, make or like a cornbread. You should breading. make. You should. You should do a series. Man. Because a YouTube if, you, series. if you have veggies that are going bad, chop them the fuck up, put them in a beer batter. Throw them in a breading. Mm-hmm. And cook them in an air fryer. Everyone's got an air fryer now. I'm tired of hearing right. this shit about air fryers. I refuse to get one because I have an oven. I can just make it in the oven. Actually, actually, we have an, we have an air fryer. God, and there it. are times where you're just like, well, you know what? Leftover french fries, leftover whatever. If it's if it, if it was fried, you throw it in an air fryer, It's it comes out just as good as you had it you know, fresh in, in a couple minutes. And you're, you're, you're not suffering. You're not suffering. Uh, you're not settling for microwave. It's all soggy and gross, and you're not throwing it out. The, the air fryer is wonderful, but also that's why um, I put them on the fucking oven. Like you get an oven tray with a baking sheet, throw it on there so the air circulates. I get it. It's an air it's, fucking fryer. It's done. I get it, but 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 the air fryer has come in handy many times really, when we're doing something. Really say, mad about like two or three extra minutes of preheating an oven. That's what we're <laughs> no. arguing about now. <laughs> We are so first world. Anyway, um, no, no, this is this is more... The air fryer comes in handy when the oven's already taken up with something. And you're like, okay, well, what are we having for the starch? Oh, hey, we're having, I don't know, tater tots or whatever. We're having french fries out of the freezer, whatever. Boom, throw them in the air fryer. We feel good because we're not frying them in oil. The oven's being used already. And so whatever's in there is not losing heat to, you know, this other thing. And... Look, man. You know. I've, I've had tater tots. The best mm-hmm. thing about tater tots is the fucking oil you fry them in. Tater tots are disgusting little barrels of sadness and styrofoam and oh. non-seasoning. And I forgot to bring one up. Damn it. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Anybody who eats them, all of your taste is in your mouth because it's not in those tots. That's right. I'm taking on the whole tater tot community. Oh, no. Big old writer. Fucking at me. <laughs> um. I actually tried forgot him, to bring I've it up. I've tried them cauliflower. I've tried them regular. I've tried them homemade. I've tried them gourmet. Tater tots fucking suck. I'm oh, tired man. of people bragging about them. They're just a carrier for your ranch dressing that you like more than the tots. 
We all know it. S- Sally. Catch up for life. S- Catch up for life. S- Sally, Stephanie, whatever your fucking name is. It's Brittany, bitch. <laughs> uh, I forgot to bring it up to uh, the room six where I'm recording this. Uh, when I was at Cracker Barrel, they brought me uh, my burger and it had a skewer in it. And on the skewer, top of the skewer was a little barrel. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. And there's a, can I get a handful of those? And I now have whiskey barrel swizzle sticks. For oh, if somebody wants a cocktail, that's so good. That's what you put the cherries in when you make it old fashioned. Yes, and um, or, or what's that? Here you go. Here's a swizzle stick, and and I I, I was like, yes, ding. So anyway, moving on because we're already at about an hour, dude. I know this is going to be a 50, this is an extended holiday look, episode. We are at fifty three minutes by my clock, and my yep. my voice recorder is a, the latest fifty three minutes. So fifty three is fine. We are we are still running. That's fine, and and and. Uh, Again, thank you for listening, pod, uh, Patreon members. Um, number five, if your partner talks in their sleep, record it. It'll come in handy when one of you swears you already had this conversation. I cannot tell you how many times that I wish I was recording when my wife will just be like, I told you this, and I'll, and everyone will say, no, you didn't. And I'll be like, I know. <laughs> she, she remembers things sometimes that she never said to me. Uh- or that she may have heard me in my sleep say, Allison doesn't talk in her sleep. She says mm. words in her, just words. Um, Lip, tow truck. Or <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like little someone with Tourette's, but she'll also have these little moments in the middle of the night where she's snoring heavily, deep, deep in her subconscious somewhere. And she'll just start cackling. <laughs> and I was and I was on the phone with a friend of mine when she did it and it scared the shit out of me like I looked in my fucking <laughs> camera to see what my reflection looked like I was ghost pale white it scared me that she just went into a oh, it would scare me, she yeah. went into a laughing fit and it's not her normal laugh which was what worried me so much it was oh great yeah it was a laugh I hadn't heard before Later, come to find out, it is the same laugh she puts on at work. Yeah. Her customer service laugh? Yeah, kind of like the customer service laugh. The bosses made a joke laugh. Like, that's the laugh it was. And I went, oh, I didn't like that. It made me feel weird. But it took me a while <laughs> to hear it because I hadn't heard her do it at work until she was in, like, a conference call a couple days later. Right. But, yeah, uh, so, like, the laugh weirds me out more than the general... Or like the singular. Um, I didn't want to. Seven. Like <laughs> green. So basically, everything's got a different inflection and tone in it. Every <laughs> word has a different mood. Mm. Ugh. And it's like I'm not going to sit here and try and analyze it because. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm not going to sit here and look for patterns that don't exist. But sometimes she does say shit or laughs, and I go, ah, I was only already recording, instead of just sitting here <laughs> laughing and enjoying it. Because that's what I do now. I sit there and I laugh and I enjoy it for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, it's really fun. It's it's fun, but it's not like, you know, it's not something I want to weaponize. Weaponize. Well, it's more of a CYA situation, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, all right. Uh, uh, I'm going to jump to number four if you're okay. Uh, number four things people don't tell you about when you move in with someone: be prepared to pick up dirty laundry from right in front of the hamper. I don't care what gender that we're talking about. There's always one. That doesn't. There's always one. It's never bothered me. It I, it bothers me when it's literally in front of the like not oh I I went for cope you know I I went for the shot and I missed. And I just didn't pick it up. No, it's like there are five things piled in front of, right in front of the hamper, it's and the because, hamper is empty. It's because you're the person who wants to do the extra step to make it easier for the next shift. Probably that's that's an intrinsic value in people. But like I said, not, again, not if you're has. if you're prepared to do it, fine. But if you're not prepared to do that, you better be prepared to do it because you're going to discover that oh. Regardless of where the hamper is located, it, right in front of it will be some dirty laundry, and you're just going to be like, really? You couldn't? Even if you missed the shot, you couldn't just 
Pick it up. I 100% agree in. with you. I see where you're coming Probably from. I'm a kid. <laughs> I, I also want to say, get used to picking up other people's dirty laundry. <clears throat> and, yeah. and, and be expected to pick your own shit up. Well, like, yeah, like that clean up, saying. clean up after yourself, but also realize you're going to pick up someone else's work some days. It's going to fucking happen. No one escapes it. It's yeah. It's, some days it's, it's fine. It's a partnership. You're going to do it. You got to work together. Right. Work smarter. Not now that harder. being s- make the dream. That work. being said, yes, okay, okay, metaphor boy or similar uh, a, a slogan boy. If you that being said, if you have an issue, you've got to be able to talk about it with your partner. Get it out and don't let it fester because. Otherwise, you know, it's just going to eventually, one day, you're just going to be like, God damn it! And it'll be some inconsequential thing like they put the fork in the dishwasher, tines up instead of tines down. And you know goddamn well that they know that you know that you want it, tines down. You know, it's like, it's this whole big thing when really the root cause is you just don't communicate. And, you know, like, it's, it's, that's the hardest thing. That's what people don't tell you about when you get into a relationship and you move in with someone is you, you see each other a lot more and, and you better be able to communicate about what you, you're unhappy about in, in a way that isn't uh, self-destructive. And to speak on that same subject, realize that sometimes when I do the dishes, it's going to be different than the way she does the dishes. Oh, God, When I yes. do the laundry and I do the laundry, it's going to be different than when she does the laundry. It's, Yes, you know, does all the separating, does all the different detergents, does all the se- does all the folding and the hanging and the putting up of the set. When men do the laundry, we just do the laundry, and then mm. it's done. Now, see, I did that, and then I decided, you know what? When I do the laundry, I get a lot of time to myself, right? Right. <laughs> um, and, and also, it's it's appreciated, even if I mess it up a little bit, right? And over time, I've learned what makes her happy and about certain things. Like, I just learned. Right. I've been with this woman over 21 years. I've been doing the laundry, like, I'll say years. Just go with years. And I just found out that apparently she hated all this time the way I folded jeans. I folded jeans in the way that I thought was, like, this makes sense. And apparently, nope, nope, the butt part of the jean has to be sticking out. Otherwise, it gets all folded weird. Yep. And I'm like... Okay, I don't know why this makes a difference. Yeah, the, you just ha- the ins- they just get hung up anyway. The, I, I don't get the it. front of the crotch goes to the back of the ass, and then yeah. and then the the sides. There's this the, point sticking yeah, out the butt part, and then the yeah. sides of the hips come forward. We, and I wasn't doing that. I learned all this when I worked at Lucky Brand Jeans. <laughs> oh my god! Did we never have this conversation? Larry used to work at Lucky. I've got Lucky T-shirt. I don't. I'm not wearing one now. I know. But I, I've got Lucky T-shirt. I'm do. actually wearing. I'm wearing a Kansas City Brewery shirt. Cinder block. That's my my uh, my my brother-in-law married to my sister-in-law. He uh, he's one of the managers there. He works there. My uh, my uh, keep your friends close, but your whiskey closer shirt. Mm-hmm. It's Lucky Brand. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Nice. So I got two pairs of jeans when I work there. When you work there, you get a couple things that like to wear the uniform. So two pairs of jeans, two shirts, and. Uh, a, like a flannel type over top thing. Right. And man, some of the most comfortable jeans, but some of the, some of the dumbest ways to fold clothes. Cause I've learned the lucky brand way, which is the front of the crotch to the back of the ass. You fold it over half, you fold it over again, done. But I just was watching a video on how they do it in Japan and they keep the creases of the pant leg. They fold the inside mm-hmm. of the pant leg into the pocket. And I watched that and I went, why aren't we doing that here? Do you know how much time I've that would have seen, saved me I've working seen that. on shelves? Have you seen that the Japanese do, the way they do fitted sheets? Or the way this person on the video does it, fitted sheets? I've, I've it's watched, like wizardry. See, that's the thing. I've, it's watched the, amazing. I've watched the fitted sheets video. I can't watch the fitted sheets video anymore because it gives me a complex. Because I'm smart. I'm an understanding human. I know how shit works. I know you have to fold things. They operate in four dimensions. And that's how you get a fitted <laughs> sheet to fold up like that. I can't handle it. You know well, what? It's the, the, you gotta, you gotta, what you have to do is you have to activate your Tesseract cube. And set the, you got to modulate the frequency to exactly 4.999999996 at 88 miles <laughs> an hour. 
<laughs> yes, 16.5 gigawatts. Anyway, oh my god. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about dirty laundry. This t- this actually touches back to uh, what you were saying. What we talked about with dishes. One number three. One extra person makes a lot of extra dishes. Yep. You'd be. It, it is night and day. Like there's five people in this house, and a dog. <laughs> every now and then the dog's dish appears in the dishes. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, every now and then, uh, for whatever reason, I'll just end up doing dishes for like say three of us. Yeah. And I'm just like, this was so much easier. Yep. Why? Yep. Why? Because yep. it used the smaller pan. It used the smaller this. It used the little, you know. ah, ah, you're forgetting the most important step, which I talked about. When I when I was living with Wayne, and we know who Wayne is, and that's all that needs to wow. be said. When I was living with Wayne, I was, whatever I was making, make it in one pan, because I can cook, and I know what the fuck I'm doing. One pan, one plate. Right. The pan you serve on is the pan, the pan you eat on, the pan you prep on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Clean it off as you go. Like it's just time management. It's getting into the rhythm of not standing there watching your fucking food cook. Trust the pan. Or being on your phone. Trust the pan to do the cooking. You need to mm-hmm. do the work in the kitchen. So you get everything done. Everything's plated. Pans are clean. Put away. You got to sit down to eat. Someone else comes through the kitchen. You get done eating, you got to put your plate away and be the last dish done. And there's six pots. There's fucking yep. cheese melted. There's crumbs on the floor, but no, we don't have bread in the house. So what the <laughs> hell is that? There's a fucking ring on the counter when you just wiped it down. Where's the ring from? It feels like it's eight months old. Where the shit did that come from? It's like a, it's like a, a tornado comes in after you and you go, yep. all right. Well, I was going to do the one dish, but fuck it. Put the gloves back on. Do the t- get through everything. Everything's been put away. Then I have the issue. When you come back in and you make something after. Have you been doing dishes and then suddenly somebody comes and adds to your dish pile? Oh. No. It, no, I will say it, that Wayne never did that. Never add, never no, no, no. would never would slip a dish like, in front of me if I was cleaning it. He would put I, it off I to the side. I try to be nice. I try, I try to tell them, like, there's so much other flat surface around here. Just put it down. I'll get to it. But instead, they, they think they're helping me. It's like, oh, please don't. Please don't. Oh, yeah. into the water. No, no, no. Or not even into the water. Like, just here. Oh, here's an extra fork. Here's an extra this. Here's an extra... And it's just like, if I turn around and it's there, that's one thing. Oh, okay. That's I missed something. If you sit there and you say, hey, I know you got your hands full. Here's more. Then it becomes a oh, fuck me, right? Man. Kind of thing. Okay, so you're you're sensitive to the not non perceived social cues. No, it's more like I'm trying to get this done. I'm trying to get this done. I'm trying to get this done. Uh, all right, here's one more. I'm trying to get this done. I'm trying to get this done. Oh, all right, here's one more. Okay. See, because I think when I, I take that as being like oblivious to the social cues. No, it's more like I'm just. I, I, I'm good at what I, it's, this to me, doing dishes is, <laughs> what I do. I'm very Here's proud of my work. You don't understand, Sean. <laughs> I'm proud of my work. <laughs> I'm prouder of my work when I'm done with it. And I hate, I hate when something interrupts me from getting done with it. But no, I'm good at managing people. I hate being in management. Uh, I'm good at doing dishes. I hate doing dishes. My, my least, my least favorite thing doing dishes is actually emptying the dishwasher, and and that is that is silly. I know because emptying the dishwasher means all this stuff I'm looking at can go away and be washed magically. I get that, but it's one of those things that you're just like, just once I want to, just once I want to finish dinner and have exactly five dirty plates, five dirty forks, five dirty knives, a dirty pot or pan. And that's it. And it's never that way. Guess guess how many steak knives got used? Guess how, I don't know, how many washcloths got used for literally drying my hands, boom. And then, oh, I need a washcloth. Go grab another one. Happens more times than I care to admit. And I just, that's where you have to tamp it down yeah. use alcohol to keep it down see, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding see we have a we have a, a pretty nice comfortable system 
sometimes I open up the dishwasher and there's nothing to do. Sometimes uh, I forgot to run it, so it's just yeah. so full of dirty dishes. Now, that being said, Some, that being said, sometimes the sink mm-hmm. and the counter and the top of the oven are covered in dirty dishes. Sometimes they aren't. <coughs> sometimes right. somebody did all the work. Sometimes we work together. And sometimes it just there's an ebb and flow. And it, it's See, just, yeah. it has to Air fit. Problem. It has to fit the situation we're in. We're still doing the recovery from the brain tumor stuff. I'm right. I'm gearing up to start teaching again. This is going to require me to be a bit more serious and a little less fucking fun. You know, like mm-hmm. it's going to be honing in time. So a lot of the stuff that's been let go over days and days is going to be back into the daily grind of like getting home, making sure this is done, knocking this out. Uh, before you go to bed, making sure a load of laundry is ready to be started the night before instead of the day of, like right. doing the prep work. And I think the prep work schedule is where everyone feels just so overwhelmed because it's like I can't even catch up. How am I supposed to get into oh, totally. prep work? I totally. It, it to me that is the same thing as the hardest part about going to the gym is getting off your butt. Once you're there, you're going to put in the effort. Hardest part about doing a good job at work is getting off your butt. Hardest part about, you know, anything. And the same goes with, you're looking at a pile of dishes, you're like, come on, you know it's not going to take that long. It's not going to take that long. It's You know what to do. It's it's such a shorter journey than everybody gives it credit for. Like, there's a saying, the longest project is the one that never gets started. And to this day, I'm f- going to be 50 next July, god damn it. I, I still have to remind myself... Just do the work. Just get up and do the work. Come on. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. You know, you, you've done it before. It's not that hard. And like, whatever it is, I have to sit there and like hype my, like give myself a hype talk or pipe pep talk and be like, come on, I, come on, stupid. Come on. You can do this. Rem- it's not that big a deal. Remember how good you felt the last time you did the work? See, that doesn't work on me. I know. I know. But that's the one I hate hearing. That's the one oh, that like yeah. gets under my skin where I go, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not as happy as I was the day. The, 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 right. Today I'm oh. feeling this way, so I've got these feelings about it. To me, it's like when when plans get canceled is the best feeling in the world. Even if you really were looking forward to it, when the plan gets canceled, you're suddenly just like, hey, I'm free now. That's time I have to myself. And and it, it's like crack. And and, and you know, not doing a thing is always better than doing a thing. You know what I will say? That I am feeling the cultural shift on this. And this is, I will end my diatribe on this. Okay. I'm feeling this cultural shift of you extroverts are now finally starting to realize how goddamn good it is to be an introvert and to be... Wanting to be in the cocoon and in the shell and in the safe place and do all the stuff from home and relax and chill. Right. But you fuckers dragged us out to all those goddamn bars and made <laughs> us drink all those drinks and hang out and listen to all those terrible fucking songs when we could have just been chilling at home. And no. And then and then your work and then your work says and now, we're reopening the office. And now everyone goes. <laughs> Now, now we're talking about like introverts are feeling more extroverted because they get to do stuff online. Like this is easy for right. me. I've been doing uh, just over the last couple of days. I've been getting back into the very toxic community of Call of Duty game chats. And oh, it, geez, I why, will why, tell why you, would you? Let me tell you the air of positivity that is rolling mm-hmm. through these games is infectious and wonderful. And I'm like, this is what gaming should be. And I'm going, oh, this is all the extrovert nerds that are like, hey, we just want to be heard, seen, and felt, and like mm-hmm. not judged for our opinions. They now have a voice, mm-hmm. and it's much more not aggro. And it's like, oh, this is a nice community now. There is a cultural change where now all the, all the people who are like, oh, I'm big and bold and yeah, I got to keep the thing up all the time. And they started going to therapy and they started thinking, oh man, if I go inside, it's real dark in there and I got to hide and I got to do the introvert thing. And we're all going, we've worked through that in therapy. First time. <laughs> and we get, we get to find this new positive attitude. Won't you join us, friend? 
Oh no, you're yes. in the dark place. Like it's it's one of it's us. Such, one of us. It's <laughs> such a weird shift, and I've never felt it move like this before. But that's because now we have things like, you know, the better helps and the tele teledocs and in like healthcare is just <clears throat> shot 180 degrees around in the two or three years that we've really been struggling with it. I right. just wish we had these same resources given to everybody in the U S yeah. veterans, homeless. If we could just give that as part of the universal healthcare platform, then maybe we could start to make some real progress as a country. But you know, that's why I wanted to end because if I get in a political diatribe, I won't end. So that's a little teaser. Uh, I love doing the politics stuff. So now number two, number two, number two, number two. <laughs> no, oh, that was, that was actually really good stuff. And, and to your point, uh, I'll just say this real quick. We'll hit it and quit it. I think a lot of the reason why healthcare has gotten so much more, uh, just mental health in general has gotten, uh, so much more awareness and visibility and, and turning around, like you said, was the people that made more money suddenly found themselves needing healthcare, Ooh. mental healthcare. And we're like, Oh, and, Are you saying the super rich finally realized that money doesn't buy well, not happiness? Not the super rich. I just mean the people who were like, you know, the middle, middle, uh, American, uh, what, what, what's the phrase? Middle, uh, middle America, middle income, middle, middle class. Thank you. You're welcome. The middle class, middle class, upper class, system. upper class, lower class. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The middle class was like, hey, I need help. And I have the disposable income. Right. The upper the upper class they are so far gone. Most of them anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but number two, number two thing people no one tells you about because you know trying to trying to keep this train on the tracks. Damn it. Uh, number two, you better know whose toothbrush is whose. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Forty two. I'll leave this off. Mm hmm. You better know that shit when you're single. Yeah, but what I mean is, I'm just saying, like so, things that nobody tells you before you before you live with someone. You better know whose toothbrush is whose. I hope you know whose toothbrush yours is if you live alone. Because see what happens it's is like though, why you're a couple why why pick up the toothbrush that isn't yours? It's not your toothbrush. Don't don't pick it up. It's not it's not yours. Don't touch it. See. I'm spoiled because we have two sinks, so I know which one is mine. It's the one at my sink. But you can't, there was a time where you guys have we this, had one sink. Do you guys have the same toothbrush and the same color? There was a time we did, because a lot oh. of times you can buy you can, you can buy two packs. Because why wouldn't you buy two packs? It costs less money than buying two. But if they look the same, I'm not getting them. I get the ones that look different. <laughs> right. Well, when you have two sinks, it's not an issue. Because you're like, this is my tooth thing, and this is yours. But but that's the the reason I put the line in there Josh, is if the, you if you <laughs> even if you have two sinks and you get two toothbrushes that are different, they'll still be on different sides. You <laughs> yes, just, you can avoid any of the debacle by getting debacle. two that look the same. Now listen here, you little shit. <laughs> just saying, why why but it, why it, put it, yourself it extends, through the through the through the, through well, the rigmarole in the first place. The reason I put this on the list is it extends past toothbrushes. It, it basically is like, you know, you carve out, make sure you carve out your own little, you know, niche for your, your toiletries or, or your, you know, whatever. Because if you don't, I, this is just what I found online. I'm, People were I'm complaining listening. all I over the place. I didn't say anything. I'm listening. I'll mute myself. People Jesus. were complaining how, yeah, we had to, you know, take a, a name. Don't mute yourself. This is, remember, unedited. Turn that audio on, bitch. Chuck one, two. Don't. Yeah, okay. I know where you live. Hmm. But anyway, fine. I'll gloss over number two and just get right to number one thing that people should know before moving in with someone. Are you ready? I'm, I'm impressed that I got you off of the number two train. And you didn't make a number two, like, hee hee ha ha reference. Well, we were talking about toothbrushes, so, you know. Yeah, but number one, no, 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 poopy. Anyway, number number one, anything that annoys you now will be missed when it's gone. 
So you ask yourself, is it really worth getting upset? Oh, about? God. Yeah, I ended on a downer, you didn't I? I ended on a serious one. <laughs> hey, death is still a thing. Thanks, man. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question for the podcast. Remember yeah. that question we asked? Death, why does it suck so much? Yeah, thanks, Zach. Uh, fucking, because, because, because it's, because it's, uh, oh, man, I want to do a sketch I think it someday. sucks because it's so unknown. I think it sucks because it's so unknown, but go ahead. Oh, no, start. no, I think the opposite. I think death is known the world <clears throat> over. I think everyone knows death. You either know of it, you know it personally, or you've been close enough to see it. I think, I think that's the problem is... Death is really the only thing that exists that's infamous. In a, okay, it, but we've we've already talked on this though. Let's talk about anything that annoys you now will be missed when it's gone. Sorry to rein you in there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Either the the laughs at the dumb misogynistic things I say. Okay. Excuse me. Or listen. No, I'm not asking or, you for things or, you that would be missed. Or listening to when she like the. I know. I'm trying to. Point? I'm trying to. I'm trying to put a spin on it. The hard part is okay. putting the spin on the end, like. Put the sauce on it. Ah, because I know I'm trying. I know what I would miss, but but what would I like? That's where it, that's where I'm trying to come at it from. So why don't right. you hit me with one? Because you looked at well, this first. So give me a couple minutes. My, I wasn't going for what it what it no, you now that I know. missed. But my my point was this: that this is really us. Like you know, you've been in more than one relationship. You're in a relationship right now, and you've been through some heavy stuff. I've been through some heavy stuff with us which is kind of what made me think you know what i i still want to be in this i still want to be with her whatever annoys you now about that 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 person does or they say or how they react to certain things or movies they don't like or whatever whether you know it, it it's not that important you you really have to ask yourself is it worth it is it worth losing them over and if the answer is yes they you know, disrespect me all the time, they cheat on me, whatever. That's a whole other thing. And yes, that's worth losing them, get gone. But if it's like, oh, I can't stand the way they load the dishwasher, I can't stand the fact that they hate on Star Wars all the time or whatever. Or, you know, she hates that I, I or, or I, my playing online all the time annoys her or annoys them. It's, that can be worked around, that can be worked with. You've got to realize this is a partnership and, and it's a uh, your team. And nobody's going to be like, everything is perfect all of the time. Because it's not. I'm here to tell you, been married 19 years, been together 21 years. <laughs> there are things, there are times where you literally have to just say, no. that I'm not down with that. No, 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 no. And then they, they have to take it and vice versa. And you, you uh, what's the word? Oh, compromise. That's the word I'm looking for. It's it feels like giving in, but really, longevity is the ultimate test. And I think with keeping in in tune with that, you have to keep track of what your your character and your moral fiber being boundaries are, and you have to be able to set them and say this is acceptable, this is like you were talking about. Right. This is a you know this is an agreement. This is an agreement that we're in a partnership together. And with every day of that that comes, there are going to be negotiations. And damn near everything's up for negotiation. Just about Pretty fucking much. anything. You can be moved a little or a lot on any particular subject if it's not serious. If it's fucking serious, you know what your non-negotiables are. Exactly. And that should probably have been discussed way before moving in. And if other. your list of non-negotiables is pretty fucking big, maybe really get a grasp on what's negotiable. Right. Um, you can you can I, you can you can make some sacrifices for the betterment of what is going to come together. But man, if you are too goddamn steadfast and you are not willing to compromise or or budge an inch, it's not going to work. 
it's just not going to work. And, yeah, and, and they sh- that they should have probably picked up on that before you moving in with you. Right. Also, uh, number one a, don't move in together if you don't have any kind of semblance of a of a foundation. Right. You know what? Actually, I'll say one B to that is if you're not nervous about moving in together, you need to have a talk. <laughs> you really need to, you need to sit down and say, all right, here's what I do and here's what I'm into and here's what I, I hate. How does that jive with what you know with you? And you know, I didn't have that talk with my wife, but fortunately we lucked out and there were a lot of things that lined up. And the things that didn't, it was like, oh, that's new. I'm here to tell you, 21 years in, I'm still finding out things that she loves or that she knows or that she hates. And I'm just like, oh, okay, put file that away with assimilate that into and, you know, make necessary changes. Um, and, and vice versa, because we're human. And, you know, if you're not changing over time, what the hell are you doing? Well, we talked about uh, the things that we hate. And really, I was adamant about how much I didn't like living here the first time. Um and it was which surprised. I was surprised when you said you were moving back. Everyone who I have talked to who has known me has been surprised. However, this is where I have to come from, being that I am. I have to, as I mature, I have to outgrow old opinions. Right, and I think that that's an acknowledgement point that we don't discuss enough is admitting I was wrong about some things and I changed my mind on some things and I'm able to be flexible on some things. I'm not willing to die on as many hills as, as younger me was because younger me was a fucking idiot. Oh yeah. Like talk to anybody over 30 and they're going to be like, Oh God, I was an idiot when I was X, X, Y, Z ages year old right? because I believed or I, you know, yeah. Like just music, music choices. You know, there was uh, Patton Oswalt has a great bit, and he's like, when I was uh, 22 or whatever, you know, not only did I hate certain bands, I had to tell you how much I hated those bands, you know? And now he's just like, eh, I don't, I either like them or I don't. And like, my my defining, I don't know when it happened, but somewhere over the years, I suddenly be- had this criteria of, I like them, but I wouldn't buy them. Like, that's it, you know? If I had the choice of, I have money to buy this album, would I buy this album? And the answer is either yes or no. And see, Fortunately, and see I would only want to expand on that one step further and say, if I'm not going to buy their album, would I pay to see them at another show? And like, give them give them another shot yes. a couple years down the line. And it's either yes, I would, or no, I wouldn't. That is the beautiful thing about Room Six is that I get to review, like, I get access to so much music that I wouldn't have access to. Uh, either I'm, I'm interviewing somebody and they're they're rattling off their influences and all these bands and musicians I've never heard of. And I look them up and I'm like, oh wow, that's a new favorite or that's cool or that sucks. And I also they'll give me their music and a lot of uh, I've had more than one musician who's been like, hey, I got a new thing. I know you reviewed the first thing. Here's the new thing, and suddenly it's way different because of they added a new or they replaced somebody or they added somebody or it's been five years and life right you know that they lost somebody they gained somebody whatever so all right well that's the top 10 things that nobody tells you about moving in um i'd love to see in the comments on this uh video what do you think is something nobody tells you about when moving in um i'd like i realize this is a long episode it's you know it's the holiday episode we're going going two hours baby yeah why not two hours well, we're going longer than an hour, obviously. It's yeah, we're almost an hour and a half well, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to move on to weird holiday, a weird holiday tradition. I was vaguely on the periphery aware of this thing just by its name, but I didn't really get into it until I saw a post somebody made explaining it, and the subsequent comments just made it even better. So are you ready? The Okay, in Wales... A Welsh Christmas tradition, so you already know it's going to be amazing. The Welsh Christmas tradition of Mary Lloyd, that's how it's pronounced, or Marie Lloyd. Apparently, you'll get a knock at the door. Are you familiar with this tradition, Sean? Not by the name. Okay. There's our there's our sensor uh, noise. <laughs> pop it, pop it. Ah. Um... I really need to get like a whiskey popping, a cork popping sound and use that for something. Anyway, apparently you'll, during the holidays, during Christmas, you you can get a knock at the door from a horse skull on a stick. 
that starts singing rhymes to you, basically saying, let me in, let me in. But it's spitting rhymes. And you have to sing back excuses why it can't come in. And this rap battle ensues until one of you fails. And if you lose, it can come in and raise your pantry, your beer, whatever. So you literally have to win a rap battle against a fucking dead horse to keep your whiskey. <laughs> that's, He's speechless. That's pretty fucking wild. However, that's metal. <laughs> however, and I don't want to shit on your parade. Did you watch Big Mouth, the most recent season? I'm not aware of this. What is a Big Mouth? So Big Mouth is a show on Netflix, and it is a show about the coming of age, the the wonderful puberty years that Phyllis is is growing into young adults. And it is a cartoon hosted, like headed up by Nick Kroll. And uh, uh, All right. uh, uh, John Mulaney. I, you know what? I think I did see some sort of ad or something on Netflix once for it. So but I didn't click. I didn't look at it. So in more, one of the more recent episodes, they get into that and they talk about that. There you go. And I'm trying to remember where I was going with this fucking point. Uh, I don't know. Shit. <laughs> God Loser. damn it. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't I? Why don't we? You think about that. You've ruminated sorry, on that whole life. Because oh, now, what I was going to ask you was to repeat what you had talked about, but then that makes for you know an annoying listen for anybody else. I can't go uh, back ten seconds and listen to it. Here's the, here's here you go. Christmas horse skull yes, rap thank battle. You. It was a Christmas. It was the Christmas episode. Thank you very much. It was the Christmas episode of Big Mouth, and they talked about in Sweden there is another caricature of like a Krampus character that will dance off with with <laughs> fucking Santa, and to hide from him coming into your house, you have to hide in a child sized coffin. What, and, what? Yeah, so you have to hide in a child sized coffin. You're gonna love that episode. It's gonna it's gonna fill you with joy. It's this story, God damn Sweden. Yeah, but it's fully animated, so it's like the spirit will come alive and it will tear little children apart because they did not hide well enough from it. Fucking hell! What and is the, the um is once you hear the this, name of this? Oh, shit. Let me see. Uh, it is Big Mouth. Because uh, I would type in Big Mouth Sweden Christmas Special Monster. And let me see. Father Johan, a real Dutch Christmas story. Big Mouth okay. Season 5 sees the Netflix show celebrate Christmas with its very first festive special. A very Big Mouth Christmas sees the Janssen twins share a terrifying holiday tradition from their native Netherlands. Sorry, not Sweden, Netherlands. My bad. Ah, okay. My bad. Because my wife's half Swedish. My mother-in-law's full Swedish. I would have heard of this by now, I think. Vader Johan. Vader? Vader Johan. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, particular Christmas story. Two real European Christmas stories that have Krampus out of uh, Belsnickel and bad-tempered fur-clad figure who, according to the legend, beats children with a switch. As they should be. I mean, <laughs> the fact that we limit that to the Christmas season Really speaks to <laughs> how soft says the, how soft we've gotten as a people. Says the man with no children. Uh, never wanted him. Yeah, the world thanks you, by the way. Uh, Jesus, this article is fucking ridiculous. Okay, anyway, Father Johan, Father Johan, goes around and fucking eats children. They got to stay in a little, uh, a little coffin to fool him because. The whole premise of being under the covers doesn't work because, I don't know, the Dutch and quilting or some shit. It's a great episode. Go sit down and watch it. But it goes into something similar on that scale. So I'm like, yes, I know of something similar, but I don't know of that particular story. That's weird. That's but yeah, amazing. But yeah, they made it up apparently, but it's a combination of a couple different things. So I'm going, yeah, it's Krampus. Wait, 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 wait. You mean the show made it up? The show made it up. Out of oh. out of out of a combination of Krampus and another right. another Middle Eastern uh, uh, monster. Because I was believing you, I was totally there, man. I was believing you. I was bought in. 
That's weird. Um. All right. So yeah. Good. So yeah. Good Chris, stuff. Christmas is fucking weird, and it's way more horror themed than I think people give it credit for. Oh, see now you notice I didn't pull out Krampus because I was like everybody knows about Krampus now, and and Krampus is pretty metal, but Mary Lloyd just seems like. It's a, you get that knock on the door, and you open the door, and there's a goddamn horse skull on a stick, <laughs> and it's rapping. I don't know <laughs> like, how I'm going to be able to interpret because you what <laughs> what you got no leg to stand on with that argument, that rap. Oh, look at that, and we're done. And look at that dismantled horse head on a stick. He has got no leg to stand on. That way, the rap. Apparently, are. whoever whoever gets picked to do it uh, from the town or whatever. They must have practiced that. They must be good at at these. Oh, I, I say rap. Okay, it's not like they're just yeah. picking on poor fucking Johnny Jimison. No, 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 no. Who this is a know, tradition. Who doesn't know a fucking? This is a tradition, ABC and somebody knocks from... on the door with a horse, and they come in and they they quote unquote raid your pantry, take your beer, or whatever. And I'm sure it's like you know, ah, ha, ha, we take a loaf, we, we take some bread, or we take drink a beer or whatever. And I'm, I just thought that was hilarious. Like the comments on this alone were like, so let me get this straight. <laughs> I bet you, you lose a rap battle with a dead horse <laughs> that could drink your alcohol. <laughs> so I, bet, I was like, that's perfect. I bet you there's some there's some frat guys who work tirelessly at being that <laughs> character. And that is just yeah, right. who they are. And now it's become their fucking TikTok personality. Here's my here's my question. How good is the rap game in Wales now? <laughs> I want to check that out. <laughs> oh, doesn't uh, Tech Nine on Worldwide Shoppers any of the previous cuts he's, he's done of Worldwide Shoppers? Don't they have any Welsh? I believe I know there's that Britain's got some some really good rappers, but I don't know about Wales in particular. But I don't know. Hey, there's a shout out to Tech Nine, a Kansas City favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really? I didn't yeah, know he was Kansas yeah. City. Oh yeah, strange yeah. music is big in Kansas City. Uh, but that's to, that's to everybody no... thinking that I know nothing about this place. Right on. Uh, all right. So yeah, we're, we're, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh no, we're moving on. It's weird fact time, baby, and this is not holiday related whatsoever. Oh, but th- this is. Did you know the seventh biggest pyramid in the world is a Bass Pro Shop in Memphis, Tennessee? <laughs> he's he, he's. <laughs> Somehow, sh- uh, somehow, that's one hundred percent on brand. But, right, it was abandoned for about a decade. It used to be something else, and then uh, apparently, before it became a Bass Pro Shop, it was like a mall. It's all right. You keep coughing your whiskey. I get it. Lightweight. Anyway, I'm just kidding. You all right there? Fifty six percent. That's two ice cubes in. Wow. All right. So it was abandoned for about a decade. And it used to be like a mall, apparently. And uh, apparently Bass Pro Shop's like, we're not sharing. <laughs> it's got a hotel in it now and shit. Uh, rumored to be cursed due to a crystal skull installed by the owner of the Rainforest Cafe that was previously part of the building. Because <laughs> people are dumb. But I, I was just like, wait, 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 wait. Not only is it the seventh biggest pyramid in the world, it's a Bass Pro Shop. And it's, of course, in Memphis, which is a city in Egypt. Where there was pyramids. I just thought it was funny. And not I shit you not, with no prodding from me, no update or nothing from me, yesterday on that road trip with my daughter, she pulls out, did you know? And I was like, as a matter of fact, I did. I'm going to talk to Sean about it. I just love that seventh, six other pyramids, all in Egypt or around the world. Because, you know, of course, the Maya and other places had, uh, other cultures had pyramids. But it was like, Bass Pro Shop. Fucking hell. <laughs> On brand, again. On brand, just, right? Just, right. you know what? Makes too much sense not to make sense. Hey, Sean, do you know what time it is? Oh, no. What time is it? It's time for weird news. It's time for weird news. I'll tip stuff on the internet. That's weird ass news. And here we go. <laughs> God, it's been so long. Uh, Gunther the Fifth. A German shepherd is selling his Miami villa, once owned by Madonna, for $31.75 million. His main home is in Tuscany, and he inherited it from his grandfather, Gunther IV. Some human at some point was so 
fucking rich and so goddamn just, I don't know, stupid. They said, hey, Gunther the first, I'm going to give you my inheritance and you pass it on to your children. Yeah, doesn't that make you kind of angry? Yeah, I have no words. I have, I have, no, I have nothing. That's <laughs> he, He's asking for a moment of, of pause here. <laughs> here comes the positive spin on that. I am willing to look at that situation and admit that maybe the first was the dog that came up with that first man from nothing. That was the mm-hmm. only thing that man had. And so by goddamn... Virtue against every single living person's thought. He said, no, you people don't deserve this. He does. And so, yeah, this is like a, it's like a, it's like a, to him. it's like a movie. It's like a bad movie. He, no, no, it's like a great film. You shut your mouth. You know mouth. what? Yes. You know what? I'm sorry. So I, I apologize. gets this declamation of, I worked so hard for this. This is what it's a come to. And now the movie is told from the dog's perspective about the dog becoming self-aware, having an existential crisis and realizing that money doesn't <laughs> buy everything. And he's tried to teach that <laughs> through multiple generations of the money being passed down through what humans look like a ridiculous contract. But really, the dog has to carry all of the emotional weight. That's a movie. Son, look at that. All I know is... I want to be whoever's in charge of that estate who's like, oh, yes, Gunther V would like to sell his Miami home. And uh, by oh. the way, I live here, and I, I'm going to enjoy that $31.75 million in, in our main home in Tuscany. If that I'm dog like, is picking everything, I'm teaching that dog how to use the little talk buttons so it can tell you yeah, right. what it wants. Because, goddammit, that dog has more money than me. He deserves more of a voice right. than I do. <laughs> Actually, get this. That, that villa... Originally, it was worth something like $5 million when they bought it. I don't know what the, the so market... And just the market and the property share values? Like, even if it was worth thirty, you you the the profit! You're just like, shit. And like, all the profit wow. goes to a dog. Wow! Wow! <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, another weird news fact. Kids in Vermont were asked... Uh, school kids in Vermont were asked to name the city's snow plows... Notable mentions are... Oh, Plow, are you Plowy McPlow face? Yes. Ah, uh, Plowy McPlow face. Because <laughs> we're 10-year-old boys. Yes. Uh, Plowy McPlow face. Snow be gone, Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Burrito. <laughs> Snow be gone, Kenobi. Oh, oh, big props to that kid. Fuck it. You win. I, what uh, I want is I I want that I want that plow to have a little 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 speakerphone. Hello speaker there. And, yes, and it'd be like hello there instead of you know please move to the side. Hello there. Wait a minute, we're smarter than this. How did this happen? <laughs> All right, another one is a burrito, like b r r hyphen i t o burrito. Jennifer Snowpez. Hold on, you can't just glance <laughs> over burrito. That is God damn it, I just that is good little kid. Whoever. Whoever, whoever, whatever fucking second grader that was, you you get a prize too. That's a good one. I like burrito. That's the thing. But I also the article the burrito jokes when you wrap a cat up in a blanket. It gets me every time. Yeah. It gets me. You guys ever? Yeah. I, I love Kyle. Kyle Canaan says, "You guys ever have a burrito? It's like a taco got cold." <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's a good one. Uh, it's like all a right, taco so. Got cold. Let me let me get through this list because they're they're all they're all gems. Uh, burrito Jennifer Snopez. Maybe it has a fat ass. I don't know. Um, Frosty's demise. Bit dark. He's giving me thumbs down. For yeah. This, by the way. Yep. Yeah. Wait, wait. William Shakespeare. Oh, sorry, William Scrapespeare. <laughs> Death Blader. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Darth Blader. Darth Blader. Maybe, maybe, maybe a thumbs up. Right. And and Steve. <laughs> Steve the snowplow. <laughs> Just Steve. Hey, hey, I, hey. Yeah, I'm ever, fine with if it. If anybody's ever watched Dodgeball, Steve the Pirate worked. Right? I'm Steve just, the snowplow. I, there was no, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. You know what, Steve the snowplow, you got my endorsement. I want to hear I it. I should say, each, each of those names and more 
were like one name was was the winner from each school. There was a shit ton of schools apparently in Vermont. Oh no. Um, yeah. So Steve won. Um, oh, okay, wow. moving to mid- all right, Steve. I I decided to look up. Hey, what's some weird news in I don't know Kansas City or Missouri? Yes, I said Missouri. Over one thousand pounds of grapes were stolen from a Missouri church. Right? Like that's just weird. They were used in tradition. Uh, traditionally, they were used in making the communion wine, and they had like a bunch of vines in the back of the church, mm-hmm. and they just grew, grew grapes. I'm like, okay, cool, go for it. They were stolen right off the vine. Thousand pounds. I'm like you gotta be a special kind of dick, right? Like how? That's what, is, you, that's what you're taking away from that. You're not stealing because you're hungry. You just that's what you're taking away from have. that. Uh, well, what are you taking away from it? Man, people in church really like their wine, and they hoard a lot of grapes. Maybe they should fucking pass them out to the poor, the needy, the ones that are looking for grapes that need some grapes in their lives. Why don't they share some of them grapes? Fucking no, grape they're, ra- they're they're raising the grapes to make their communion wine. Yeah, to I get give that. To people, I get that. I hear it. Okay, I'm saying yeah. people are in need now. So what? I just thought it was weird. I just thought it was no, weird. No, I blame the church. I blame the church on that one. Yeah. No. The uh, no. I still blame the thief. I still blame the thief. No. But no, I blame the church. I, I'm I'm pretty firm in that one. <laughs> I, don't, I, lose, I, I know where it paints losing me. listeners as we. I know where it paints me. That's fine, man. No, I I get you. All right, let me, then moving on to Florida man. Oh crap, Florida man. <laughs> Yes, oh, we are fini- we're man. finishing this podcast with two Florida men. Oh, shit, two of them? Yes, one involves Waffle House. Oh, of course it does. It's a Florida story. I'd be disappointed if there wasn't a Waffle House. Was there also a black teen involved? That would be the that would be right up don't there with, know. The, with the with the bingo, the Florida I I, Florida man story I, I, bingo. Don't worry, I'll get y'all cards no, no, no. for the next episode. But, but I will say this, the Florida man tried to rob a Waffle House with a dog yeah. and finger guns. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's said he Yep. He came in, said he was quote high and drunk, yelled, Get on the ground, y'all are getting robbed, and then grabbed some napkins and left. And when they came to arrest him, he's like, Yeah, I went in and got some napkins. <laughs> Imagine getting arrested for stealing napkins <laughs> with no weapon. I you know what? I'm gonna take a controversial take. I'm gonna side with Florida man. I'm going to say he didn't do anything wrong. He should be acquitted of all charges, and he should be I, and he should be awarded those napkins. I, <laughs> yes, <laughs> lifetime supply of napkins. In a surprising now, turn, pick that guy up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, but no, I, 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 he didn't do anything wrong legally, except for coming in and th- like, yeah, he didn't. He didn't even have a weapon. Yeah, that's those what I'm saying. Loaded. He didn't do anything wrong. I. This is where I'm like, I don't, I don't side with the law. All on he this did, side. well. The only law he broke was disturbing the peace, really. What? Really? For disturbing the no, peace? You said y'all are getting robbed and you had Whoa, 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 whoa. All I'm going to say is, if you're going to charge him with something, this is a, to me, this is the same as a, a Karen coming in and, you know, treating people like shit and yelling for the manager and, and being, you know, just getting kicked out, basically, because we don't want you here. You're causing a disturbance. This is the same guy. Like, you, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? Like, hey, don't take those napkins. Have a seat. You know, we'll 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 serve you. No, it's this is a weird. It's just weird. That's all this is. Is weird news. I'll, I don't I even just, know. I would just reach up and say, hey man, do you need those napkins? Are there not? The thing is, are there not? Yeah, like, are there not more napkins that we can get you? Well. I think that's why the headline is he tried to rob a Waffle House. That's why I'm like I don't see the problem. He shouldn't be in any kind of in, a, in any kind of a reprimanding situation. Let the, well, let, let, me the guy, the scr- let the guy steal his napkins that there are more of. What is that? Flip the scr- Wait, can we consider uh, that a petty crime now? Well, Big Paper wants their money. No, Fuck Big Paper. Three M. So come after me. I'm 3M. gonna <laughs> come on HP gonna, Hewlett Packard. I'm gonna flip the script on you. To, to, we're going to move on to Florida man who actually was arrested for something. Oh, good. But when you hear what he's arrested for, you're going to have opinions, I bet you. Florida man was arrested for threatening Disney on Twitter. I will read that again. Florida man was arrested for threatening Disney on Twitter. 
He created an account, an account and then immediately made 186 tweets in three hours. That's commitment. That's about how he was going to. That's copy. No, 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 no. Each one was different, and each one was talking about how he's going to throw grenades through their no, win- the executive's I'm saying, windows. I'm saying you save oh, yeah. you save all that time by copying pasting at Disney. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah then you don't have to type it every he, time. But he 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 just he tweet he tweeted how um he would throw grenades through executive windows and blow up all the executives' houses with C fours. So yeah, eventually, idiot, the police are going to want to have a word with you. I'm all for free speech, as long as you didn't follow through on it, fine. But 186 tweets in three hours is still... You, you've got issues, dude. We need to get you some help. Yeah, we're talking harassment now. We're not talking about just a joke, like creating a funny Twitter account. We're talking about, you've doxed, right, right, right. You've doxed me, you've put out my address, you're going to attack me personally, now we have an issue. You know, say, to saying me. something over the internet is saying something over the internet. A death threat is a fucking death threat. Like, that's not acceptable. And whatever generation allowed that to start happening, maybe it was my generation with all the stupid Call of Duty bullshit, you can't do that anymore. That's not fucking well, acceptable. I think we need to... There's one thing that I've always felt strongly about is stop blaming generations. It's not a generational thing because you're part of a generation, I'm part of a generation, and the things that are attributed to those generations, I'll say 9 out of 10 of them, we don't particularly ascribe to. The the negative things that are ascribed to those generations. You know, um, that being said, Florida man, I know that there's other people in other states that are just as dumb and that there's, but, I mean, come on. Finger guns and robbing napkins and tweeting Disney is just like, what the hell, dude? I I wish I had that much free time, honestly. Uh, you know, from what I'll say is you were 100% right for calling me out of my shit about making a generalized, generalized generational statement in that I just watched a fucking podcast about the generational war how bad it is. It's on a YouTube show called uh, Some More News. I think they're very funny. I take it as being entirely politically satire, like Bill Maher, with a touch more of compassion and empathy. Okay. But I find it to be better than sitting down and watching real time, where Bill won't just shut the fuck up for a minute and listen to somebody younger than him. Yeah, you know what? I... I I stopped paying attention to him when I realized that. I was like, dude, just, you're a comedian. Yeah. That's how you, you know, no, you're not. Don't be so you know, opinionated you have, that you forget that you're a com- comedian first. Right? Like, you, dude, you're, you're not even that funny. Let's go. Right. Yeah, I said it. Come at me. Um, with that, sir, believe it or not. I think we're all just about ready to wrap up here. So if you're still listening, thank you very, very much. You have been so very kind and patient. Um, and we hope you have, you know enjoyed it as much as we did. I personally had a good time. I don't know about you, Sean. Of course I had a good time. I always have a good time when I get to come on here and talk to you and, and just kind of shoot the shit and not have to worry too much about life and just sit back yeah. and enjoy the good conversation, the good company, and, of course, the good drinks. I mean, this is so, just, this is right? developed, just evolved over time and, you know, couldn't, couldn't have been happier. Yep. And in, in summation, I just want to th- say thank you for being a patron. Thank you for, you know, subscribing. Uh, I assume you've subscribed to, to Ube 6 or to, to Ube 6. Wow. That's a new one. <laughs> new one. I, like, <laughs> cut that one. Right. No, I need to, I need to make that channel quick. Uh, no, thank you for subscribing to Room 6 on YouTube. Um, and and uh, if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Go on. Get. Do it. But um, thank you for what... We hope you have a great holiday season. Thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you next month for Two Brains, One Bottle. And, and remember to be amazing. And I guess all I can say besides that is... Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-